So in all the work that I do, we employ community-based participatory research as sort of the governing methodology that guides our work from conceptualization to dissemination of findings. Now, community-based participatory research, or CDPR, is a methodology that's getting increasing traction in translational science, given um, its success in being able to ask difficult questions about persistent health disparities. And what CDPR does is that, it, is that it invites community members who have traditionally been disenfranchised from the research process to participate as co-investigators and to contribute meaningfully throughout all phases of research design and implementation. Since my time at UM, I have been using CDPR primarily in Little Haiti, the largest enclave of Haitian settlement in the United States. And what that means in terms of recruitment is that the strategies that we use to identify potentially eligible participants is largely defined by community members. In the two studies which you've asked about, success and fit, one of which is funded by the National Cancer Institute and the other which is funded by Bankhead Polney, community members have advocated for the use of community health workers as our primary strategy for recruitment. So community health workers tend to be people who are indigenous to a target community, who speak the language of that community, who are knowledgeable about cultural norms and mores, associated with the community broadly and also specifically with regard to discussion of health and other sensitive topics. And ideally, they have very large social networks that they can easily mobilize around research. Our community health workers undergo intensive formal training on, you know, in this case, cervical cancer, but could it be any area of research, also around study design, and then they're also certified by the University of Miami Institutional Review Board to participate in human subjects research. The community health workers do what they would innately do. And so they work through their social networks and through community venues where they know their tar the target population is likely to frequent. Churches, flea markets, laundromats, bus stops, adult education centers, um, church activities and health fairs, and they approach people using their language of preference and in a culturally appropriate way, whereby they can start to have a dialogue around research participation. And we find that this approach is actually very essential because in many of the communities that we serve, there is ingrained historical skepticism about research and the perspective that participating in research necessitates being a guinea pig. So by employing people from the community and promoting research, we don't encounter those recruitment barriers because they are promoting research and initiating a dialogue about research that makes sense to the people who are potential participants. One of the things that CDPR necessitates is that our dissemination effort not be restricted simply to high-impact peer-reviewed journals that only academics tend to read. So CDPR really necessitates attention to having the community help disseminate findings so that they can lead to practical, real-world change. And so when we do CDPR, we work very, very closely with community members who ultimately own the data in trying to identify communication channels and other, van and other venues by which we can share findings and start to conceptualize how such findings lead to future inquiry and social action. As an example of this, our community advisory groups in Little Haiti often sponsor an annual community forum whereby any community member interested and concerned living in the Little Haiti community can come to hear about the work that we've been doing collaboratively and can contribute to our understanding of findings and also inform future directions. 